We got a lot more people tweeting bad cosplay. This time it's sitting in the base trade TV Twitter instead of mine, so I've been missing some of them. But we'll get those caught up on stream here in a moment. We got some resubs to give some love to as well. Thank you, Matt Pike, for the 21-month resub, as well as Rickaby. Rickaby, who is perhaps the greatest esports bakery delicacy connoisseur of all time. She makes the greatest cookies I've ever tasted. Thank you so much for resubbing. But uh, in the bottom left side of Detox, we've got the purple Protoss. It's Gung Fu Banda. In the top right, it's Billowy as the orange Protoss for the Africa Freaks. Yep, playing from Korea. Now, we've got some more cosplay we got to go over, so we're going to actually get caught up on this stream. So if you guys uh, haven't checked out, go to the Base Trade TV Twitter. That's where I'm going to be linking or going over these from. But uh, we'll put this in the corner so we don't distract too much from the game as we... <laughs> This is the Facebook one, the Dark Templar, apparently. <laughs> um, this was the Overlord we had referenced earlier. Uh, Wisecracks coming in, so he's a Brood War medic. With a highlighter? I'm not sure I get that one, actually. But Wisecracks looks handsome in a suit, so we'll give him a pass. Uh, Broad Bailing, because he's, he's hiding under oh. the bed. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Uh, this one says he's a stalker and he's just being creepy through the window. I like that. That is funny. I'm going to favorite that one. That's great. Uh, Nazfles, this was the one I, I exclaimed about during the break, actually. He's a drunk burrowed lurker and, like, the beers are the spikes. It's too fucking good. I like this one. Uh, this one, I haven't seen yet. Sentry complete with a guardian shield. He's holding, like, a little something above his head. Great. Oh, the stalker. Oh my god. The stalker one's pretty good. That's a cool tattoo. And then uh, this burrow or this hidden bailing, it's just a bailing plushie. So that doesn't count as cosplay, unfortunately. But it's cool to see nonetheless. It's... Now, all this cosplay stuff is not just done in good fun, guys. We are going to be handing out some. You, I will do more than one prize. We'll, we'll hand out two sets of G2A gift cards to the winners today. So if you want a chance to win some free games, I guess, through G2A, so... make sure to uh, enter in and win. I feel like Wisecrack's highlighter is because when they, when they heal, they kind of do like the warm, 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 warm thing. Like oh, the energy beam. Yeah, it looks like it. Like looks like it. Like it's just like a like a glow stick in her hand. I guess. I can kind of see that. I what? also was wondering if I had to do with flare, but no one ever uses flare. <laughs> well, it's also the he took that at work by the looks of it. But he's always dressed in a suit, so that could actually be him lounging at home for all we know. Right? I've yeah. never not seen that guy in a suit. Him and JD <laughs> are, like, always dressed to impress, no matter what. Yes, they are. Maybe they coordinate? You know, should check, uh, see if they coordinate next time. <laughs> They're like, what are you wearing? Because I don't want to wear the same suit. Like, if That'd we both show up with the same Armani, that's going to be so awkward. Like, Yeah, really awkward. All right. Uh, PvP does pick up, though, and they're both going for Stargate openings here. Now, it's worth noting, reminding everybody that these players both have won money by getting this far into the cup. And, of course, the winner will go on to play against Guru in the Grand Finals. But PvP can be a very delicate matchup. And if this is going to be a difference of one Oracle and one goes Phoenix, the game could already be over there. But if they both go Oracles, they both go Phoenix, the game very well may continue you on as uh, again like small losses early for protoss are actually big losses early for protoss uh i mean pvp <clears throat> has really developed from the beginning of wings of liberty to legacy of the void it's actually really enjoyable now especially with the rarity of protosses in general you know, but like how do you make protoss better by making them an acquired taste yes actually yeah, um, but the there's one thing that is plaguing Protoss versus Protoss, and that it is apparently the uh, how common Phoenix versus Phoenix Warriors are. So, um, I mean, they can be interesting, but they do end up being a lot like <laughs> um, a lot like Muta versus Muta Wars. So, if you don't like Muta versus Muta Wars, you probably aren't gonna like Phoenix versus Phoenix. But uh, hey, maybe you will. I mean, that's what they're gonna be going into. So, be prepared. <laughs> I think that it's funny though, we haven't actually seen Phoenix versus Phoenix in quite some time. Not in Legacy at least. But they're both going to double stargate it up, and it is going to be that dedication into Phoenix, so we're not going to see a bunch of weird, okay, you and Phoenix, I went for a big adept all in underneath it or anything like that. Hmm. I mean, it seems like. Yeah, because the Muta versus Muta, it's, uh, you know, Ling's actually very important on the ground. They can soak up that Glaive Worm, but. I don't know about Phoenix versus Phoenix. I definitely don't play Pros enough, and I don't go Phoenixes. So, <laughs> to ever find myself in a position would be very rare. And I mean, they're both going for double Stargate. Um, there is one, I guess, discrepancy, and it's who goes for the range first. Sometimes numbers what? trump uh, initially, 
because you know you're waiting for the upgrade to finish yeah that's very true and in some rare instances we've seen that range being devastating but at most like the phoenix do match each other for speed so if you are a little too close to start then that range benefit's gone forever like you won't actually be able to right. run your opponent so um we'll see it looks like billowy is going to be going for that though with a fleet beacon being slapped down gung fu panda it's worth noting he went from really being a round of eight slash B lister player at best to somebody who was competing in WCS and is a pretty good player. So competing with Billowy, it's a little bit daunting at first because again, this is a Kespa player. Maybe it's a B team or not, but he's been on a lot of teams and all over the place. But Gung Fu Band is a really good player. I don't know about this Void Ray choice though. What the hell is this? Does he... They, they know it's like they're both getting Phoenix, right? Yeah, yeah it's just... He's going multiple Void Rays. Maybe... So either this is something that we just don't know, because, you know, PvP, what? Um, and eventually the transition of Void Rays will work, or he didn't think Billy was committing to Phoenix versus Phoenix. So, again, before we go into this, we didn't, uh, gotta give credit, I didn't look at the unit snap in time. Gung Fu Band actually went in with less Phoenix and just took that fight from Billy. That was actually pretty fantastic. The stacking he did was actually pretty important to the micro. Well, that is certainly impressive, but he's still going to have these Void Rays that are going to be so odd. I mean, I, I really don't know which one, you know, the options I, I just talked about it is. But if it's the first one where he's, like, intentionally doing this, knowing it's Phoenix versus Phoenix, I mean, maybe it ends up being the better army, which I can certainly see. Like, you know, mass Void against mass Phoenixes. I actually don't know who doing that. Um, but <laughs> the problem would be that the Void Rays couldn't keep up with the Phoenixes. So they also don't have the range to keep up with the Phoenix at all, even with that upgrade. I mean, I guess... So it's going to be range 7 versus range 6. It's going to be close that the Voiders could at least shoot back, but... They'd have to, like, really find a point where Billowy couldn't micro, though. Right, that's... exactly. And that's not that's not really something you can do in Air Wars, unless you find Third. them in the corner of the map. <laughs> Third Stargate coming down out of Billowy. This is this is a very odd decision. He... Gunfo's also... He not just went for Voiders, he's actually changing out, which is, um... Something like, again, if you're talking about Muta versus Muta, the first person to transition out has a big risk of just losing right then and there. But if you can, then eventually the ground army would be better. Like, Archons would take on the Phoenix Splash and, you know, Mass Stalkers. But... Well, so my thoughts on this are, he goes for the third Stargate because he still thinks it's Phoenix versus Phoenix. He hasn't actually seen the Void Rays yet. So in doing so, that's how you plan to catch up in the Phoenix War. And again, even against Void Rays, this isn't a bad choice. But this is becoming a little bit funny because we're going to have Templars for some feedbacks. If nothing else, it removes at least the uh, shields because of the energy damage yeah. uh, component. But it's... Uh, I don't know, Zombie. This is so weird. I can't I can't see a situation where Gung Fu Banda takes a great fight with the Void Rays, but I also can't see a situation where the Phoenix is going to have a good time versus Archons and such on the ground. Right. This almost feels more like when we see Roaches attack into someone going Mutas. Kind Again, of. I'm going a lot into the CBZ uh, analogy, but it's like if you win the ground war or you just bypass the air war entirely, I suppose, then you can still do a lot of damage. But the Phoenixes are obviously going to take control of the map and of your bases. Like, you're not going to be able to catch up to them. You didn't go for Blink Stalkers. Even if you did, having enough Blink Stalkers, you know, because they can pick up a quite a few, would be really difficult. And your Archons are going to get stuck. And yeah, Gunku just goes for the. What could just be an all-in. I mean, if the Phoenixes realize what's happening, they just sit over the cannons and and risk themselves. But it's Archons. Archons can't be lifted. I, I really don't know how this is going to go. The Void Rays produce such a weird dynamic of this, too. He's still going for more. Uh, he's going to actually... It's Billowy, excuse me, who's going for Void Rays behind this. Now recognizing the, I guess, direness of the situation. Because Void Rays can at least shoot down. <laughs> Phoenixes, unfortunately, can't. They rely on lifting. So that's where the Archons, as you mentioned before, become really, 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 really good. But the the Stalkers, the Zealots, sorry, the Zealots, the the Immortal, nothing of this shoots up. That's where the Void Rays can just kind of reign supreme for a bit. Well, Bill is getting his own Void Rays, so that's a limited time offer. Yeah, actually dives in for this, takes out most of the air with that one pass. And this gets a little bit awkward for Gung Fu, because his army's not looking too shabby, but it also doesn't look like it's going to survive once his opponent's Void Rays enter the fray. Um, you know, now that Billowy. I guess realize what Gung Fu was up to. Like he's also going for his own ground in a very similar ground composition, which makes sense. Like charge lot, immortal, uh, archon. You just you know keep Blink Stalkers for later. I suppose Gung Fu is getting a couple right now. But <clears throat> that that point where Gung Fu decided to go 
for the ground as opposed to stick on the air was probably a really scary one. And Billowy, I thought, was going to do a lot more damage running over his bases with the Phoenixes, but he's actually the one that's down in probes and down a fourth base. Well, cannons are still being rebuilt, and of course the overcharges were helping out a little bit there. The Archon, the feedbacks, the kind of cool moves out of Gung Fu Banda winning him these defensive fights now. Because while Billowy's been picking off probes, it's worth noting, like, Billowy lost a whole base and a whole base worth of probes, right? So it's 18 workers killed for 18 workers, but it's Billowy who's only got 55 in play. Gung Fu Banda, whatever he bleeds out, he happily makes up with that fourth base advantage. Mm. Well, I mean... We've seen a lot of Phoenix Phoenix Wars, and this really has not played out that differently because it's Legacy of the Void. Obviously, the economy makes everything a little bit different, but like, there's not really been a lot of new units, obviously. It's, it was originally Phoenix vs. Phoenix. To see them actually transition out, and even look better, Gung Fu that is, is a little surprising, but it has really worked. Like He has the better ground army, he's covered his bases with cannons, which, uh, you know, they don't entirely dissuade the, um, the Phoenixes from attacking in, but they certainly make them think twice. I, it's been an interesting game that actually did not uh, end the way I thought it was, which is usually like Phoenixes eventually fight each other and then whoever comes out with least uh, loses the game. We have Billowy still kind of committing to the Air War too. Like he, he didn't really make that many more Phoenixes, but he's back in a Void Rays and even getting a Mothership. So eventually, Mass Air is still the best composition for Protoss if you can actually get to that point, you know? But it usually takes a while and you're. Kind of weak for some time. I really want to see this mothership zombie. Like just mothership in PvP. Like what is that? Uh, it it's, is... I mean, it was good once upon a time, and it really just fell out of the match. <laughs> and the cloak, yeah. the cloak aspect is gonna be funny to see. But uh, sorry, try not to giggle because we just got an amazing cardboard Thor slash immortal entry into the bad cosplay contest, <laughs> and uh, the guy looks so happy doing it. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah. Okay, these Archons are plenty ready for this. Uh, picks off the Hallucinate Phoenix, not a lot of scouting. I don't actually know if Gung Fu had eyes on the Mothership, because of course it's being morphed way far in the back. So Cloak going to be an issue, as Gung Fu has no detection. That is an issue. I guess he was not expecting a Mothership, because who does? <clears throat> you know what? Well, not only does he have no detection, part. he doesn't have any new, like any way to easily get detection either. Uh, going mm. for some Warpians, DTs managed to get into the base, so I guess detection a problem for both sides of the equation here. Yeah, Gung Fu was the one that put down cannons everywhere, Billowy did not have that same problem, and is finding himself a little caught off guard. Not not too badly though, I mean they're both maxed out, and Billowy does have the better army because he's down 30 probes. I mean, that's actually a very significant it's, army supply lead. Mm, it is, but it's weird because now we're getting into army types, right? So. You're up 30 supply that quickly dissipates when two disruptor shots come in. You know, like, and it's, it is no disruptors yeah. for Billowy, whereas it is going to be for Skill and Fubanda. And I think at the core of what PvP but, is, whoa, Billowy. Right. Oh, so, Billowy. I mean, I said the gold on Armada is the ultimate end game. And we can see Gung Fu also is going towards that, that, that stage. And you're absolutely correct. If disruptors had gone in there and killed 40 supplies worth of the ground army, uh, Billy would still have been in trouble, but Gung Fu is not attacking because, well, he lacked protection, first of all, and also that was a very difficult army to look and say, I'm definitely going to win against this, let's go for it. So they're both backing off from each other, and Billy has that bit of a head start. Well, this is where it gets weird for me, though, the choice of carriers. Like, I'm excited and I'm glad and I love carriers, don't get me wrong, but Tempest beat carriers every Every single time. So if Gung Fu Banda, you know, he's now put down his fleet beacon, he's got a couple of stargates from earlier, if he goes for his own Tempest production instead of carrier production, snipes the mothership, kills the carriers, and he's got the better ground army. He does, yeah. It's, you know, we've talked about, okay. This we, is this fine talked about the, uh, right, exactly. Like, we do not see PvPs that work out this way. I mean, they originally started off with Dangerous Phoenix, and now it's into a, you know, 15 minute PvP. Like, it's usually all about Blink Stock or Disruptor. But we didn't talk about the map, right? Because it was, you know, a mirror matchup, so no one really had any favor here. But in terms of compositions, we have found that air does work really well on this yes. map, whether it's Needlesk or Drops, Liberators, but especially Cares and Tempest, because it's not only about the dead, uh, dead area around the map or between the bases, it's the actual attack paths have a lot of ledges and little, like, uh, towers that you, know, you can actually micro back onto. Ooh. 
Kung Fu Panda trying to keep us hidden from those Phoenix. Uh, you know, one thing we didn't talk about either is, of course, forgetting that carriers have this really awesome new ability in Legacy of the Void. Oh, he kills his own Dark Templar. Where they can dump the Interceptors. And in that one rare instance, you can actually dump those and walk away and do some fantastic harass. Mm -hmm. Oh! Okay, well, that actually hit a, quite a few units. Yeah, but the Stasis Trap, I think, not nearly as good as Revelation. Hmm. Well, right, it's not doing anything, you know? Like, if the entire army's moving over to the right side, you'd be like, oh, oh no! This is doing something, though. This Warp Prism, I didn't think was going to be that big of an issue, and it's going to get cleaned up, unfortunately, because, well, guess what? It's Phoenix. But the DTs, the Templar, oh. I mean, the uh, the Zealots are killing a lot. It's, now, the fight's going down over here at the same time, but Mana powers several buildings, and these DTs killing key structures. No Templar Archives means no more Archons. Kill the Fleet Beacon, no more Tempest to fight your own Tempest that you're building behind this, which Gung Fu Banda is doing back at home. Hmm. Oh, the Disruptor! Oh, they actually get that good shots. They shoot on top of two Immortals, and they both have that barrier. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> Hard off, shield? So. <laughs> Whatever. So this is just going to be a very long tournament, apparently. <laughs> so, yeah. They're not really looking to fight each other quite yet. Uh, Gung Fu's not uh, up to par on the mass air part. <laughs> Where Billowy, of course, just has to be, in, in general, safe. I mean, no one's going to look at each other's army and be like, yep, I'm definitely going to win that fight. And a lot's going to come down to the positioning and uh, micro, too. The Phoenixes do feel a bit like dead weight in the in the whole main army, but they will maybe add some, uh, you know, the Void Rays accidentally shoot them instead of oh, the mothership. Oh, the shots. Oh, devastate the ground. Billowy, who was up in supply, now knocked down. It's kind of what we were talking about before. Gung Fu Banda's constant harass has been really great while this has been going on, too. It's not actually killed that much, funny enough, but it has kept Billowy from snowballing. Constantly have to replace pylons, making sure his buildings are up. He's getting more carriers now, which is really weird to me because Gung Fu Banda did reveal his Tempests. That's actually, true. choosing to go for more carriers is really weird to me. Oh, Arkham's well, stuck. <laughs> I was like, why is he killing his own cannon? I really don't know what is better. Um, this is all getting into... I mean, maybe even a little bit of 3-crafting for these guys. You know, like, how many PvPs do they play in general, and how many end up looking like this? Uh, certainly, the sticking to the basics is good. Gung Fu, with his harassments, doing a really good job. You know, ex out-expanding his opponents. He's playing the better late game. But when it actually comes to the unit compositions, I'm not so sure how they know how they're going to interact. So our carrier is better than Tempest. Tempest have the range, but carriers have the, the leash, you know, and the... Eject interceptors if we ever see that. Yeah, they could just eject and disengage and not even take the fight. Um, back away from the Tempest range. I mean, technically, I guess carriers have the biggest range when you think about it like that. But big attack down here, not going to be stopped by these cannons. Gun for Banda didn't have them up and running. But, you know, the harass on this side, the attacks on this side with the disruptors, 15 more probes go down. And we're getting to this point in the game where, all right, yeah, Billowy having less workers means bigger army supply. That's cool. But you still need an economy. Mm hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, did we Stalkers. just get Mothership? Oh my god. Mothership oh, we to did? Mothership. Mothership to Mothership. Now, how much detection do they have? <laughs> two observers is two observers. Uh, Oracles are obviously going to be best for both, but uh, mm -hmm. it's worth noting, because we did this sort of like thing with Fear Dragon a little while back. Disruptors, it's worth noting, are stealth, and when they shoot their shot out from a Mothership, it gets really weird. You can kind of see the ball, but it also has no targeter, so it's really difficult to tell where it is. Like... Again, I really like the disruptors for Gung Fu Banda so much in this game. Because mm. as good as the Golden Armada is, if Archons get under it, Archons are going to have a grand old time. <laughs> That's certainly true. I, I really don't know what it's going to look like. We still have Billowy up in supply, army supply, rather, because of his you know lack of probes. That's also why Gung has been able to do so much harassment, is because he's had so many probes, giving him so much economy. That's uh, replenishing this army is not a big deal. He's banking 6,000, 5,000. They can't actually see each other's army. This is what's so silly about this. <laughs> like, neither of them have adequate detection. There's one observer for <laughs> Billowy and his, and there's one observer in Gung Fu's. Now he's got an oracle, and that I give a little bit of an edge to. In fact, both players finally have an oracle. DT's on the other side of the map, though, finally starting to tear through some of the more important buildings. Tearing mm. down one of the Stargates, but there's still plenty more where those came from. Gung Fu Banda now going for his own carriers. I wait. Uh, another problem for Billowy with the lack of minerals is he doesn't have any minerals to place defensively. So harassment will continue to be a thorn in his side. Yeah, look at <laughs> it's just realized, look at that bank of Gung Fu Banda while this goes on. Right. Look, yeah. I think our, our Kespa Korean is actually the one on the outs coming into this. 
I mean, Gung Fu really just played the better game. After that little, like, fearful moment where he had transitioned out of Phoenix vs. Phoenix, yeah. he had a good ground army, he was out expanding Billowy, and oh, he was out no. harassing Billowy, too. Not oh, this is kind of a nice, you know, gift for Billowy. I mean, you can afford to replace them pretty easily, but this, this right. for me is rather astounding because, okay, you can argue Korean come to Europe, that's latency issues, and that could be why Billowy might lose a PvP, but I feel so little of this game was influenced by latency, and so much of this was tactics. Oh, like right here. Oh, God, Gunk Bandit, don't start giving this away, man. I'm talking good stuff for uh -oh. you. Don't don't start throwing the game on my behalf. Well, this is going to be certainly oh, very interesting. Tempest is, yeah, focusing down that mothership, so there goes the cloak. The biggest concern for him, but uh, it is a big unit. Though. So no cloak for Gunk Bandit technically either. Hmm. Oh, there goes his base. Uh, Gung Fu, he, you know, there was always the problem that he was down. I think at the start of that fight, he was down like 50 army supply. Yeah. Billy had really taken a lead there with a lack of probes. But it is his one, maybe like he has a fourth of an army after this with that little bit of a bank he has. But it's the one push Billy really has to win this game. And Gung Fu has time on his side. Yeah, I mean, the thing is he loses these bases, but they're mined out. He doesn't need this. This is just slowing his opponent down as the Tampas get some free shots off. Uh, gotta give some love to Aramie, by the way, for that 16-month resub. Thank you so Ooh. much, good sir. Three more Starcase coming out of Gunk Banda, and you would normally argue there's no way you could produce seven carriers, eight carriers at a time with this sort of gateway production, right? But he's actually got the money for it. Yes, he has quite <laughs> and, a bank. And it's funny because you bring this up, like, time is actually of the essence. This is one of those rare times where being able to ex expend all your bank oh. in one round is very worthwhile because you want to get units on the field as soon as humanly possible in this situation. But Billowy, um, man, I, I gotta say, like, Gung Fu, I almost wish he would reinvest in those disruptors. They did so good for him earlier. Billowy is going to go to the northern base, which I was going to talk about. Like, that's still mining pretty pretty nice. And actually has three of the Stargates here. So Billowy changes course, doesn't go ahead and push the issue, go into the army. He's going to continue taking down uh, bases. If he recalls, he can trying... go right now, but he's not going to have time. Yeah, that not, not would not be a good time to do it. But he's pushing him down to almost equal bases, but Gung Fu still has the bigger bank Ooh. to replace said bases. We haven't actually talked about upgrades either, which are now on the board again for Gung Fu. I believe but... he has the better ones at 322 versus... One, two? Oh, so much better. He's about, he's about to shred through his opponent's base here on the right side. And a very important base for Billowy, who needs to mine off of it. But I was going to talk about the, the carrier counts, actually, three times as much for Gun Kubanda. Like, they match each other on Tempest, they match each other in a lot of things, but the carrier count for Gun Kubanda is really skyrocketed. But as cool as carriers are, I think the nine void rays for Billowy are where a lot of his strength lies. Because if those mm -hmm. get the chance to overcharge, excuse me, prismatically align on anything, it dies. I also wonder, like, there's seven immortals as well. There's um, four more carriers? What the fuck? To no immortals and six archons of Gung Fu, and I wonder if they're going to help blast through that ground or actually be a hindrance here. We'll see. Uh, but the upgrade's really, like, skyrocketing ahead for Gung Fu. I, I didn't really notice, and you could say that it's almost not worthwhile talking about because there's going to be so much, like, splash and just straight up damage. Like, who's going to be paying attention there's to what the upgrades There's actually not going to be splash, though. There's not a lot of splash damage at all. Yeah, just the Archons. Yeah. Um, but there's going to be so much just, like, <laughs> GPS going down, I suppose. It's like, if one person's out of position for one second, that's going to be the difference maker as opposed to maybe upgrades. But the upgrades are pretty severe. I mean, he bothered getting shield upgrades. I think Billowy just uh, got that plus one shield. Uh, he's investing into a plus three shield. It's so, so many. Was, I don't think I've ever seen that. I'm not going to see the void. Not yet. Well, I mean, it affects the air, so that'll be nice. There's so many cannons here, but what I really like is the stasis ward to start trapping some of these very annoying units that keep running by. But uh, as Billowy continues to chip away at his opponent, it still has barely scratched the bank of Gung Fu Banda. Gung Fu Banda is just like... <laughs> Gung Fu Banda is like Donald Trump right now. He's got so much money, and he's not making a oh, lot so more, but he's so annoying to deal with and just won't go away. <laughs> Shots, 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 everybody. Now, again, this carrier count is kind of insane. I said the Voidries are better, but you know what? They're not good against Interceptors. And if Gung Fu Banda just were to dump all of this army in Interceptors out and then walk away, let's not forget, he's got 5k minerals. He can replace those Interceptors. Yeah. I wonder... You know, Gung Fu has not been at a, for a lack of harassment, so I'm not going to, you know, fault him for not using those Inject Interceptors, but... <laughs> Back at the very beginning of Legacy of the Void, 
when we were experimenting or we were having people go with parries against us, one of the most annoying things to deal with was just dumping interceptors and leaving. Yeah. Like, like it was actually stupidly OP because they would deal so much damage. And, and I don't think the damage was changed. And there's no leashing. Like you can just walk wherever the hell you want. I was gonna say though, look at the income graph by the way. Even while Gunkfu Band has been losing bases, he's still doing better than Billowy on income for the last well over ten <laughs> oh, wait, minutes in this so game. Much. Like plus sixteen hundred, holy shit. Right, like this isn't like Billowy was okay, like he kept killing a base and Gunfu Banda can't expand and that sucks, but Gung Fu Banda has been like that it's reflected down here. You guys don't need us to explain to you. Like the current amount of minerals he has mined is exactly why that income graph looks so skewed. God, this is the army for army though is kind of ridiculous. Oh, we, did, we did not have the mothership remade for Billowy. Now the argument can be made that's more supply freed up for better units. But the cloak element of this is pretty nice, because yeah. once again, Gunfu Banda doesn't really... There's not a lot of detection on the field. How much supplies on the ship? Eight? Something like that. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, would, I, I don't know. Not going for the mothership might be better. There's always that one chance that the Archon splashes oh, the observer or you don't have any more. I can, I can feel the, the testosterone rising. They're looking for that fight. Archon's <laughs> advancing forward. Uh. Oh, the Tempests are getting some decent shots, but they do need to run away from the Archons. A shot is not worth, you know, five Archons splashing you at once. And the can't... carriers are ejected. That's what you're seeing right now. No, I can't even... And they are hard to clean up. <laughs> I can't even zoom out. <laughs> but this is great. Like, you just let the Interceptors rebuild while this goes on, so the carriers are in a bit of a tough spot. He may have to recall if an actual fight comes down because he doesn't have them mm -hmm. fully locked, loaded, and ready to go. But he is rebuilding them as we speak. A base goes down for Billowy, one which he absolutely needed because he has no money. Recalls away, and Gung Fu Banda once again looks so good in this game. Yeah. But Billowy, you know, it, it was the same situation as before. As he's the one now pushing in, he has a slightly better army and could take a good engagement. Now, engagement enough to win against 4,000 bank? I don't think so. <laughs> right. But he's going to try. It's the bank that makes this. Like, what Gung Fu has on the field is actually scary. It's worth noting. Nine carriers? Like, don't fuck with nine carriers. But it's the money behind it that makes that so devastating. Like, it could even just be stalkers. He's got the upgrades for it. Like, he could warp in anything and it would be effective. Because Gung Fu Banda, you brought it up earlier, the upgrades are fantastic. But any unit lost at this point, Billowy can no longer replace. In fact, he can't even replace the Nexus to mine with. No, no. He's on the eight probes. Like, 36 was okay for you know, two base barely mining. Eight probes is never okay for anything. Mothership catches those interceptors. We've got a very interesting effect with the Guardian Shield. This actually does affect air. A lot of people don't know this. Oh so the in, this is actually a much better fight for Gung Fu Banda. He's got the upgrades. He's got the Guardian Shield. The interceptors of his opponent don't even touch him. Ah, oh, there's actually definitely a few miss micro there when he's inter the interceptor. He dumps being and walks away. Tempest, dumps and walks matter. away. He's got GG. it. GG. I want to point out. Oh my god, had that been an even closer fight than it was, the Guardian Shield blew that away. Like on top of the fact that he had plus three plasma shields going into it, two more damage on top of that for mm. the Guardian Shield. Interceptors were only going to be hitting him for like two. <laughs> but okay. Deep breaths, guys. We're going to an ad break. <laughs> that was a long PvP. And it was only game number one. And we have the foreigner take on the Korean. He leads 1-0. We'll see you guys in two minutes. All right, welcome back to game number two of the Corsair Cup. We are, of course, still in the semifinals. Yeah, like an hour later because that was an intensely long game number one. A lot of people upset, though, surprised that the foreigner could win. I do remind you all, though, that... The first time we got before, actually we'll do the intros. I'll tell this really the story afterwards. Um, spawning the bottom left side to kick this off. It is going to be uh, a freak of freaks, Billowy. In the top right, as the purple Protoss, it is Gung Bubanda. So it was last year. No, sorry, excuse me. I keep thinking everything's last year. It was like two years ago for WCS when Gung Fu Banda first started taking on players like Hasuwabs in these macro PVPs, then Mama and many others, and Gung Fu Banda went from being this really cheesy Zotac round of eight player to an actual WCS qualified contender. And it was worth noting that a lot of his best successes were always in PVP. So it's no shock to me at all that he could not only just keep up with, but also take on and look better than a Kespa Korean. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of mentioned it in that game that just in general, regardless of how you figure the units are going to interact with each other, the foundation of a late game PvP, or late game anything actually, was there uh, better for Gung Fu. He was harassing better and just straight up more. He was out expanding his opponents very early on. He had like two or three extra bases. And um, 
I think also just his understanding of, of how that PvP went with the Phoenix vs. Phoenix really helped too. Yeah. I mean, there's times where Billowy I thought was going to have the lead in tech, and I think for a time he did, but he was so down in the economy it didn't really matter. Gunku was still controlling the game and eventually met his tech head on. So, I mean, certainly some of this is Billowy probably just being tired. Like, I'm guessing three minute long games is not ideal when it's 6 a.m., but I think it was just Gunku being the better Protoss macro player. Yeah, and I Billowy mean, might be looking to not let that happen again. <laughs> small details, but like one of the biggest ones being that Guardian Shield right at the end of the game. Like, I cannot begin to stress how big of a deal that is because it does affect air units, and Billowy probably wasn't even thinking of that. So. It, it, it's again the upgrades are fantastic a lot of cool tactical moves and not a lot to do with latency is what really impressed me from that uh from that game mm -hmm. but starcraft 2 pepsi is, is, is pepsi okay feels like only a month ago you asked me if i liked pepsi or coke no no it's, 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 we don't have coke is pepsi okay i hate that <laughs> thank you starcraft 2 pepsi for two month resub and i guess it would be a month ago because he just resub for two months no, that was the joke <laughs> oh, well, it went over my head. Um, Mad the Swine is all well, hitting us up with a 24-month resub. And we've got a couple... It's funny, actually, he brings up Pepsi. There's another tweet we recently retweeted. Someone with their bad cosplay continued with um, Pickle Pocutes, Burrowed Baneling. He, he, <laughs> he dives under the carpet with a Coke bottle and starts shaking it up furiously because you know that thing's going to explode. Like, that's, that's pretty good. I like they took the time to make a video, too. But the uh, Sockers clean up the Adept, so not too bad. One Adept does get across the map, but this won't get any damage done. Mm. Thank you to Ladrash for the two-month resub. Maybe it's an LED rash, like he was under LEDs for uh, too long. Oh, no. Or maybe it's Ladrash. Mm, great. Lulale. Careful how you pronounce that now. I think those are all safe. <laughs> so. But, uh, man, I... I it's it's really cool that again either of these players will go on to fight against Guru in the finals. Just a quick reminder that this is the second semifinals that we played out. So as this does progress, and albeit it may be slowly, the other bracket did have Guru advance over Mana. So ZVP Grand Finals, no matter what. Hmm. Woo. Well, I'm feeling good for Gung Fu who's going to that third base. Same with Billy. I thought Billy would want to go into macro game, but I guess you know it's, it wasn't so much a macro game as it was a Stargate based macro game and he might actually look a lot better uh, with blink stalker disrupt there which is where they're both going to right that's a lot more of the standard way to play this out too like i really as cool as those golden armada games are they're kind of rare and they don't happen often so it might be more practice to actually do the blink stalker disruptor play even though it's more gimmicky and it's almost like what is grown-up baneling zerglings like <laughs> <laughs> grown-up because, you know, Bailing League is, like, tier one stuff, right? Like, and uh, it's just as explosive, just as deadly, and, like, one wrong hit can cost you the game the same it's way. It's true. And we all know how, you know, tank versus tank battle doesn't make any sense either. and They'll just go one way or the other without any control. So, I, again, we're kind of uh, running out of things to shout out and talk about. But uh, real quick, I want to remind everybody, again, that uh, while we're having some fantastic games here in the Corsair Cup Finals, we do have another cast coming up later tonight with Fear Dragon. It's going to be the Chairs for Gaming mm -hmm. Cup. That's actually yeah. going to be starting in, like, what, four hours from now or something? Yes, four hours, 9 p.m. EST. So if we have a couple more games like that, so we'll just go directly into it. <laughs> oh, please, God, no. Don't even joke about that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Yeah. Oh, a dark shrine getting thrown in before going to those disruptors. Yeah. Oh. Uh, this is gonna be kind of nice because what one thing I think really worked well for Gung Fu Banda that game, and this kind of goes back to his choice for tactics than anything else, was the run buys. You know, he was always mixing in like two zealots and two DTs in those warp prisms. They were getting a lot of damage done and constantly catching Billowy off guard. This doesn't have to be a cheesy tactic, and it's not even with its timing, but it is something that's gonna work out really well for harass. Mm -hmm. Um. But we got double resubs coming in. Ice Pack for that two months. And as well as Hello Zergling for an 18-month resub. Amazing. Part 2s are going to be going out soon. It's nearing the end of the month. So maybe yes. like a week. I'm in a weird spot. I ordered a lot of those padded envelopes from uh, from Amazon, as you had suggested. And they still haven't been delivered yet. So mm. I'm kind of waiting on those guys. I'm hoping that, that... Amazon Prime, though. Right, so there was no option for Prime. And it said the earliest shipping would be like April 3rd. But now it says April 17th. Oh. And I'm like, they're fucking envelopes. Like, you could probably just mail me the envelope itself and we get here faster. <laughs> like, 
So yeah, I'm, I'm unsure, but uh, just for those waiting for the international partouts, that's what the holdup is. Mm -hmm. Alright, so the DTs, they either warped in, it was three of them, two of them really not doing a whole lot, it's the other one just getting minerals, or m mining off of the natural, but... You know, it was it was three base dark, dark shrine. It wasn't ever really going to do a lot of damage, but certainly knowing the threat is there is something to be considered. Knowing the threat of the war prism is there too. And they're both getting up to those disruptors. Oh well, Gung Fu's getting up to the disruptor with a second Robo. Billy goes for charge. I thought he got a robotics bay, but that's also something I saw on Gung Fu's it's, production tab. It's not just charge, but it's also an advantage through upgrades. And this is where we've talked about this before, where the upgrades for a Disruptor are irrelevant. It's going to do like 125 damage no matter what, or whatever the damage amount is. It doesn't need upgrades. But obviously the upgrades will benefit things like stalkers and charge laws and whatnot on the side. So if you can get through the Disruptors, if you can manage to not lose your army to those hits, your army's going to look better, Billowies, that is. But Gung Fu Banda has the, I think, more explosive yeah. potential to win a game with like one great hit. We saw this before, uh, one or two times. It ended up being like a charge on a mortal archon um, army, which sounds familiar, versus the blink disruptor, which didn't sound familiar, but does now in Legacy the Void. And the disruptor count being at like six or eight, it took the fight no problem. Yeah. So yeah. definitely favored the blink stalker disruptor, but it is all about getting those hits, and sometimes charge odds can really screw with that, you know? Like, they get on top of the disruptor, kill them quickly enough, or if you accidentally hit your own army because charge odds are on top of it. Well, first disruptor hit going out. Doesn't seem to be able to grab too much. Uh, meanwhile, we got the War Prism on the backside looking for some harass, which has, again, been consistently good for Gung Fu Bandits so far. Uh, War Prism here also revealed with the Hallucinated Phoenix, but oh, this isn't going to go so well this time. Two cannons, take out the DTs. Actually, um, take that back. They will not take out both the DTs, and the Zealous will kill the other cannon, so now no detection means these probes are going to die. Left him on hold position as he was distracted in the middle of the map. Loses about eight probes for this. Ooh. But when this Nexus might go down, actually, he doesn't have the damage to stop this. He has to actually bring right. some of his army back or get warp ins going. Either way, nothing's here immediately, and there's no detection. I do believe this Nexus is going to go down. Uh oh, the... Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Zealous do not have enough uh, DPS to stop that from happening. The Warbism is still alive, and Billy just underreacted to that. That pylon being sniped is huge as well. His own Warbism gets taken care of, and Gunk was looking better just straight up in a PvP. Yeah. In general, um, regardless of what the composition is, his Stupid Count's still growing. He's getting his own charge and his own Archons. They're both getting the fourth base. Uh, they're still at an even army or even supply. Gung Fu once again uh, higher in those probes, but a little bit lower in the army, but with the more explosive disruptors. You know, say what you like for Billowy when it comes to this matchup. Like I'm, I'm really or sorry, Gung Fu Bandit, excuse me, but I really like a lot of the way he plays this out. I mean, his opponent maybe is making mistakes. You could argue yes or no from from Billowy, but it's. <laughs> Gung Fu Band is seeing an opportunity, taking advantage of it. It's not like DTs automatically win you the game. Detection in TVP is a problem, but PVP rarely. You know, you got observers flying over the place, oracles tagging things. It's a lot easier to usually catch these units. Yeah. Yeah, usually. Sometimes it can be a pain if you don't have those cannons preset to find an observer that's not in your main army and bring them and bring them back. But uh, Billowy, his cannon just gets destroyed. It's one of, definitely a very annoying thing about DTs. The Observer was at the third base, or the natural, so it goes to the third base, and this Nexus will not fall. If he was pairing this up with, you know, a double whammy attacking at the front, too, it would look a lot better, but Gunku really is just just throwing in the Warp Prism. <laughs> but you know what? No other attack going on. While he does this, he gets eight disruptors behind this, right? Like, I mean, this is kind of insane. This is almost like looking at Guru's Lurker count and being like, why? why? Right. Really? Like, that's so many. This is pretty identical. Uh, he stopped making disruptors, and Billowy might start adding them in, odd in oddly enough. I guess it is, oh, you know, but... in Heart of the Swarm, you had two different compositions that inevitably went to that mass Colossus Immortal Charge Archon. Catching up on that count, though, is going to be so difficult. You could have four yeah. robos in play, and it would still take too long. Um, we do have a warping coming down here, so we might have a bit of a counterattack, but with no detection, Gun for Bandit can just warp in some DTs and easily defend the space. Sim City from the Candids is actually set up really nicely, Ooh. too, so it's not going to be easy. But he's easy to screw it too much trouble and decides to go northwards instead. But there's pylons, there's overcharges, the Mothership Corps is waiting. 
Um, perhaps not paying attention here because he is over here and in the natural base all simultaneously. So some small oh, zealots may escape by, but not an issue. Overcharge does take care of them. And now this base is going to go down once again, denying mining off of this base. Billowy finding it hard to find any money to fight with. Yeah. Uh, of course, luckily for Billowy, Disruptors can't go down ledges. Right? It would be a very abusive spot. But he's certainly not going to be able to stop Gunku Banda from being up there with his blink stalkers. As if he tries to Three run shots, up, Disruptors will go no off. No high ground vision. That's not good. Mm. Server comes forward. Observer could be sniped, though. Gunku has his own. Yeah, Gotta yeah. be a little careful. Looks for it. Uh, again, this, this whole situation in the natural... Losing that base again just takes away from his money, and this looks to be like last game. No, it's not disruptors or sorry, uh, Colossus or or Tempest or anything that's crazy different. But look at the income. Look at the banks. I mean, this is starting to get really reflective of how unfortunately Billowy couldn't keep up with money mm. all over again. Well, Billowy did go for the robotics bay. He hasn't really you you used it, <laughs> utilized it. Uh, no disruptors, not any upgrades from it either, and just it's sitting there. He's... Gung Fu's already on his way to that Tempest transition anyway. He's going to stubbornly try and take this fight because he saw he had a weapon upgrade advantage, but that was just a waste of money for Gung Fu Banda. Yeah, it was... Well, he also was maybe hoping Bilui would pull back, but once again, just staying strong at his fourth base, but Gung Fu starting out to expand him. So Bilui's going to is... look for the fifth. Billy put the robo down, but he still doesn't have any of his own disruptors. This is where it gets really problematic because, like, okay, maybe you get that one magic hit that kills Gunky Bandit's very clustered up disruptors. But look at that damage. I said 125 earlier. I must have been thinking of a widow mine because this is 145 plus 55. I mean, this is disruptors do so much damage. Mm hmm. A couple of cool stasis traps to ensure Gunky's never caught out of position with his army, or maybe just abates the army, too. This is, uh, his main army is behind those traps. By the way, he does have an observer with his army, I'm pretty sure. Oh, if he doesn't. He does, but it's lagging a little bit behind. That will trap. Oh my god, uh, most of the Archons on the right you know what? side. That doesn't just take units out of the fight. That also means that these are set up primed and ready for the perfect disruptor hits the second it comes close to ending. Mm hmm. You gotta time it up perfectly. We've certainly seen missed timings on this. <laughs> Even if you don't time it up perfectly, you're still gonna get good hits of it. <laughs> Well, with if you eight, hit it with, with it's still under the trap, it doesn't do damage. Right, but I mean, with eight disruptors, like you gotta have cooldowns. He's not gonna get any hits. Okay, you got one arc. <laughs> All right, so that could that could have gone better for certain. But another dis another trap. Yeah, that's actually really good because you know what he just did? He used all of his disruptor shots for that. Yeah, now they're Four plus uh, three, I think. Yeah, now they're starting to come off cooldown. He's going to be looking for some of these hits. It's a little bit scary. Billowy, with so many Archons, is such a hard person to take on in this engagement style. But he's warping a more Templar. Base over here on the right side for Gunfu Banda starting to go down. No Templar, no detection. So I'm surprised we don't see more DTs coming out of this. Same situation as before. Mm. But you know what? Gunfu Banda finally breaks that front line, starts pushing out. Of course, he's got that disruptor cooldown to still work around, which makes this tough. This base isn't yeah. even going down yet, by the way. This is He's killed the cannons and pylons. Like, Billowy's really done cosmetic damage with his attack. 16 probes is nothing. It, it should have been two bases sniped for sure if he was yeah. uh, clicking on it, A clicking <laughs> on the actual Nexus. Oh, well, the disruptors, disruptors are off cooldown. They're all going down on the Archons. But even then. They're actually all going down, too. But even then, like, there's just there's no detection. Oh, he's safe. He's safe. GG! Gung Fu Banda's gonna knock out the Koreans, and once again, we're not gonna have any Koreans, despite having like six show up. So congratulations to the foreign team, Europe, representing. As uh, it's gonna be Gung Fu Banda versus Guru now in these grand finals. But, you know, this is funny, like I've got no complaints about the cast going on longer. I've been asking for longer casts, but this also means, um, that I'm, I'm, I need to get some food. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go to a commercial break. I'm going to quickly like go slap together two pieces of bread or something. Uh, yes. Uh, so before I do, I want to cover some more of the bad cosplay stuff, though. So we'll take a small bit of a slowdown and break. Uh, we had Javette, actually someone we met in Toronto, ask us, oh, my God, is this still going on? And yes, until the end of the broadcast today. We'll be having this contest entered. So we're going to bring this up on stream once again because we've had a couple other entries I want to show off to you guys. Um, I haven't seen some of these yet. The Bronix? Do you even lift? What is this supposed to be? What? Like I'm a phoenix? Sure. Oh, the phoenix! It's a bro phoenix! Because he's uh... lifting. God damn it. Octopode, god damn it. <laughs> this is apparently a stalker warping in. I don't know, but it's funny looking, so I'll just giggle and move on. This is that bro bailing I was talking about. He said, shake it up the Coke bottle, ready to explode. <laughs> it's too good. 
Uh, this is an adjutant. Corsair tweeting saying that they're enjoying the cosplay during the tournament. There's that immortal I had referenced earlier. This guy looks amazing. And uh, again, this is some of the cosplay stuff we had seen earlier. So if you guys still want a chance to win, you can still tweet us your really bad cosplay. But the story for how this all started needs to go back to my Twitter for a moment. Because it was earlier today that Mana um, tweeted this silly picture. And just for some funsies, I decided to get involved. And then we uh, we kind of went from there. So <laughs> it's been a ridiculous day of cosplay. And I'm really glad to see people getting involved. But as said, I'm going to take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes. And it's going to be a best of five grand finals PVZ when we return. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you soon.